Hi guys, today we are going to spend some more time learning about elapsed time. To review, elapsed time is the amount of time that passes between one time and another time. In our previous lesson, we learned how to use a number line to calculate elapsed time, and we represented the jumps on our number line with these symbols. We said that an hour could be represented by a mountain, Increments of five minutes could be represented by hills, and increments of one minute could be represented by these rocks. And this is just a good strategy visually for you so that you can keep track of your jumps and know the difference between what's an hour and what's a minute when you are doing your number line. Um, let's look at this problem today. Mrs. Frazier's class left for the field trip at 9.09. They traveled for two hours and 16 minutes. What time did they arrive at their destination? This problem is different than the one, the ones that we did in the previous lesson. Um, so think about why it's different. Let's think about the information that we have, first of all. Um, our problem says Mrs. Frazier's class left for the field trip at 9.09 .09, and they traveled for two hours and 16 minutes. So we have, if we are, if we're filling out um, our start time, end time, or elapsed time, what information do we have? We have a start time because it's saying they left for the trip at 9.09. .09. And then it says they traveled for two hours and 16 minutes. What time did they arrive? So we don't know the time they got there. We don't know the end time of their trip. That's what we're trying to find out. Um, but we do have the elapsed time here because the trip took them two hours and 16 minutes. So we have the elapsed time. So what's different about this problem than the ones we did in the previous lesson is that here we have the start time, we have the elapsed time, we don't have the end time. We can still use a number line to figure this out, to answer this question. We're gonna draw our number line. We're going to put our start time here at the beginning of the number line. We can't put an end time because we don't have the end time. So we're not going to put anything there. But this two hours and 16 minutes, we need to represent the two hours and 16 minutes. We need to add that to 909 .09 by making jumps on the number line using our symbols, using mountains, hills, and rocks. So for two hours and 16 minutes, I'm gonna start with my mountains. I'm gonna start with hours. You don't have to. Remember, we can do these in any combination that you want, however you see fit. I like to start with hours. So I'm gonna start with an hour and say 9.09 .09 plus one hour puts me at 10.09. .09. I need to do two hours, so I'm gonna add another hour. Puts me at 11.09. .09. I don't need any more hours, so now I'm going to go for my minutes. I need 16 minutes. Since I'm at 11.09, .09, I'm just going to add one minute on here to put me at 11.10, because that 11.10 is an easy number to add fives to. Then I can count by fives. I'm going to add a hill of five minutes is going to put me at 11.10. 15. So right now I've added six minutes and I need to add 16, which means I need to add 10 more minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a hill of 10. 1115 plus 10 minutes is going to put me at 1125. I think I'm done, but I am going to double check because I like to double and triple, triple check things. My elapsed time that I needed to add to 909 .09 is two hours and 16 minutes. So did I do that? I added one hour, two hour. So I added my two hours. And did I add 16 minutes? 10, 15, 16 minutes. So yes, I added the correct amount of time to 9.09. .09. So then what's my answer? What's the end time? The end time is whatever time you ended at on your number line. So my end time is 11.25. I'm gonna show you the next screen. It has a problem for you to do. I want you to 
read this problem, work it out on your own, pause the video, and then I'll show you the next screen and you can see if you got it right. It takes three hours and 12 minutes to get to grandma's house. If we leave at 12.03, what time will we get there? If you calculated this problem correctly and did your number line correctly, you should have gotten the end time as 3.15. If you start at 12.03 and you drive for three hours and 12 minutes, you will get to grandma's at 3.15. Remember, it does not matter how this part looks as far as if you did hours first, if you did minutes first, if you have five minute hills or 10 minute hills or the order of this, as long as you get to 315 and as long as you represented one, two, three hours and 10, 11, 12 minutes. All right, let's look at a different one. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker is two hours and 22 minutes long. If the movie was over at 619, what time did it start? So what information do we have here? It tells us the movie is two hours and 22 minutes long. So that's not a start time or an end time. That's the elapsed time. That's how long something took. That's how long the movie took. So I have my elapsed time, two hours and 22 minutes. If the movie was over at 619, so it's over at 619, so that's my end time. What time did it start? It's asking me what time did it start? So this problem is different than the one we just, the ones that we just did because this problem has an end time and gives us an elapsed time, but we don't have a start time. So our number line is still our go-to strategy but it's going to be worked a little bit differently because we're subtracting time basically, right? It's like time travel. We're going back in time. So I'm going to put my end time at the end of my number line. 619. I don't have a start time, but I have to take away the two hours and 22 minutes to take that away from 619. I have to go back. And to do that, I'm still going to use my rocks, hills, and mountains that we know and love to do that. So I need to go back two hours and 22 minutes. I'm going to start with my hours. That's my personal preference. I'm going to say one hour. Subtracting one hour from 619, and you have to be careful here because some of you are going to want to keep going forward in time and you're going to put 719 here. So pay attention to the fact that in this case, we're going back. So I'm going to say 519. But I need to go back another hour. So subtracting 519 one hour is going to be 419. So I've got my two hours. I need to take away 22 minutes. Hmm. All right. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do some rocks. First of all, I'm going to say one rock is going to put me at 418. Another rock is going to put me at 417. Another rock is going to put me at 416. Another rock is going to put me at 415. I like to get to these benchmark numbers like that, 415. So, so far for my minutes, and you kind of have to keep on these subtraction ones, you kind of have to keep checking with yourself to see where you are. I need to go back 22 minutes, and so far I've gotten four minutes. So I still need to go back more minutes, right? I'm going to go with some increments of five now. I'm going to say five minutes. It's going to put me at 410. Another five minutes is going to put me at 405. So now I've got 510, 11, 12, 13, 14. I still need to go more because I need to go back 22 minutes. Another five minutes is going to put me at 4 o'clock. So I've got 510, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I can't go back another five minutes, right? Because if I go back another five minutes, that would be over 
22 minutes. 19 plus 5 is 24. I don't need that much, right? So I need to go back rocks now. I need to use my rocks. So let's see. I had, I'm going to do one rock. It's going to put me at 359. I'm going to do one more rock. It's going to put me at 358. Let's stop and check where I am. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. Let me count. Let me show you where I'm counting here. I think I can do like this. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I don't know if that showed up for you, but I counted 21. Hopefully you counted that too. I need one more rock. It's going to put me at 357. So I'm going to check again to make sure that I subtracted everything I was supposed to subtract. I needed two hours, one, two, and I needed 22 minutes. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I did it. Two hours and 22 minutes. So what's my start time? My start time is wherever I end here on the number line. Is 3, and I should say end working, right? 3, oh, that does not look good. 3, 57 is my start time. All right, so let's look at one for you to practice. My dog took a nap for four hours and 19 minutes. He woke up at 1135. What time did he start his nap? Work this out, pause the video and work it out, and then unpause to see the solution. If your dog started if your dog stopped napping, or my dog, I should say, stopped napping at 11.35 and he slept for four hours and 19 minutes, that means his nap started at 7.16. So there is some practice work for you and I know you're gonna do good. Um, just some tips, keep in mind that it is really important, guys, that you label all of these for when you're counting back. So when you're checking to see, did I, did I subtract four hours and 19 minutes? It's easy to count back everything. And make sure you're labeling your number line. Don't get, you know, don't get a little bit lazy and say, oh, I don't need to label it. I can just subtract and do it in my head. Because especially on longer ones, you'll get lost. So label everything. Use a nice big piece of paper with lots of space. Okay, bye.